Okay, here we are. We're back with Mike Sigelski, uh, part two of our series. So glad that you're here. So you make it to, you know you're free. Mm -hmm. Tell me the story how you're now waiting to somehow make it into America. Mm -hmm. How did you meet Birgit? Okay, so I got political asylum in Denmark. They sent me to Odense, Denmark, home of Christian Andersen. And the uh, Danish Andersen. refugee council tells me, okay, you, there's an address. You go to photo studio to take a picture. And we need that for your bus card. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to pick it up. You just take a picture. We will get it so, and you will get the card. Birgit? Mm -hmm. You are a professional photographer. I was at that time portrait photographer. A portrait photographer. And you move that microphone oh, to it. Right. Move it. You can slide. So you're a portrait photographer right. so, for the government. No, no, oh, no, no. This is a private. It's a, a yeah, it's a private studio. And a, a young man walks in. Yep. So the and Danish was it love at first sight? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. But so this is the Danish Refugee Council had a contract with my studio, so they would send all these people over. So I saw not only Mike, but a whole bunch of other people. A lot of them were Jewish families that were literally kicked out of Russia. Right. And then there Kicking were some other the young people between that did what Mike did. And uh, so there's, it's a small studio. There was one other girl and myself working there, plus our boss. And it was my turn to go down. The reception was downstairs, studio upstairs. So I go down, here's Mike, and he tells me he needs a picture. Take him up. I'm take his photo. Does he tell you that he just escaped? No, he didn't. But I, I knew because he, where he came from right. because of the agency they sent him over. So I kind of, but I didn't know his story. So took the picture and told him that we we're going to send it to uh, back to the refugee council. And he said, could I have a copy for my mother? And he said, sure. So I wrote it up. Didn't think any more of it. And then a couple of days later, I'm working in the dark room. And uh, the girl that worked there with me, she comes up and she says, you got to get out of here because there's some guy downstairs, some foreigner that absolutely wants to talk to you. So I'll take over for you. You go downstairs. And so that's him. He came back. <laughs> he came back to you. get the picture for his mom. Yeah. For, for his mom. Yeah. I knew I was not to return. We still have the picture, the, by the way. For the picture. Right. Because they said they will get that and that's it. Yeah. So... Uh, uh, I very quickly, I thought, okay, I have to have excuse to, to, to see this girl again. So I say, how about copy and I'll pay for it. Ah, so that was your move. That yep. was his move. And you, again, you're one cool customer. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, uh, and so. And uh, he was kind of cute too, so you know. Okay. <laughs> so then you so, ask her out, your date. He did, yes. And then you realize you're both your dreams. You know, you were comfortable. Oh, you're free, obviously. Oh, oh but, yeah. But you. She didn't want to go to America. She didn't want to go? No. No. I no. Know. She no. had a great career. I had my career. I had my career. I had parents. You know, so. I am one that talk about going to Vietnam, yeah. volunteer, because still Vietnam War. Right. And I'm not going to leave go Denmark fight. and go to like, yeah. the United so States this, with a guy that's going off to me. <laughs> so you are such a patriot already. And, and you're not even in America. You want to go fight for Vietnam because there's a war. You're saying this guy's crazy. I have a good life here. He, you manage to fall in love, oh, and, yeah. and you make it to America. Mm -hmm. yep. The two of you we did. together. Oh, yes, we did. We did. And where is the your first place you go is Missoula, Montana. Missoula, Montana. Oh, that's and where we get married. Yeah. That's where we married. get married. And uh, uh, so he because you want to be a second. cowboy. I, I, I emphasize. We start off how you knew the Wild West was your freedom. And you get to, you want to go to the West, to America. And that's what Divine intervention Divine again. Intervention you know again. what? The person who brought me to America is my American, uh, they are my Sponsor. American parents. They are my, right. our sponsors. Yeah. Retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel. Mm -hmm. He retired in Missoula, Montana. So it was not like I was Picked having it. any choice. Right. It just happened. It just happened that I am now, I have to follow this his family, they are retiring in Missoula, Montana. They are res taking responsibility for me for me for a whole year. Right. And uh, I am coming over. I, I had no idea that there was a Missoula, Montana. Mm -hmm. I knew Montana, maybe. So I come to Missoula, Montana. She comes a month later joining me. And we are in, in, in Missoula 
two weeks after I, uh, I uh, uh, arrived, I found myself a job. At, at like the equivalent of a, a Walmart or something, right? It was a big smaller than that. It was Bonanza store. 88. It was like a dollar store. A dollar. <clears throat> yeah. A dime store. It dime, was Bonanza dime. 88. And I got the job as assistant manager, night uh, manager. Could you speak English yet? I could communicate. Right. But you speak five languages, right? Yeah. But that's now. And, uh, and English was something that I was taught in Poland in grammar school. You start Russian mm -hmm. in fifth grade. And mm -hmm. it takes you all the way till through college. And then in high school, you pick up another language and it could be German, could be French, or it could be English. And I didn't have a choice. Somehow, somehow oh, yeah. I get English. Wow. And your sponsor family yep. takes you under their wing. Yep. You're a patriot. You love America already. And somehow you find yourself now in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And you do an unbelievable amount of good in the yeah. United States Air Force as an enlisted first, right? Yeah. We both enlisted. Both enlisted. And then you become an officer. Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, what happened is uh, I had three years of college from Poland. Right. And we are uh, so. And this is where so your high school I, diploma mattered. Right. Because you had exactly. it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And here I want to mention also. Since I said my dad was the person who impacted on my life, Gene Schiedemeyer, rest in peace, was my other one, my yeah, American your, dad. Your American dad. And then at Bergstrom Air Force Base, Chief Master Sergeant Mel Slate. Mel Slate. Was my, my section supervisor who guided me, who basically made officer out of Airman Basic. Right. Through motivating me. Through, through helping me to, to, to find out how, showing me how. Right. And the I Chief went to Master university. Sergeant. Yes. We visited him last January in Oklahoma. He's mm -hmm. still alive. He's an awesome, awesome I guy. I remember I saw the picture. Yeah. So uh, uh, we, um, I uh, went to University of Texas. Mel Slate make it possible that I was working four hours in the morning, full-time school, Four hours in the evening. Right. I was in sport and recreation, uh, so I I could uh, go and uh, uh, afternoon work in right. the gym, giving away the equipment, and on a type machine I could do the, my papers. I could right. do stuff. In two and a half years, I graduated with honors, and just before that, I get a letter saying, "We know that you are finishing your your degree. Would you be interested in?" going to officer's training officer's school training. and then become human resource intelligence well, officer. Human intel officer. And that's when you did even more patriotic yeah. things uh, as an uh, military I was, man. I was, you, you know, I, I'm foremost, I'm anti-communist. And uh, because I've lived this, right. I know from my family what they lived through. So uh, wherever it is, I fight it. Right. And uh, so it was natural for me. It was nothing heroic, nothing. It was wonderful that I was given opportunity to the last years of the Cold War to contribute a little bit little through bit. through whatever I was doing. And then here I am, a young kid, 18. You, yeah. You're at, uh, been an officer for a while now. Yeah, and you're, you're, you're at SOS, Squadron mm -hmm. Officer School in, in Montgomery, Alabama. <clears throat> I'm now at the United States Air Force Academy. And I'm a Polak. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> and we get sponsors, family. I mean, you come in as a freshman or a dually, and I don't know anyone or anything, and you are you have a family away from home, and you sponsor me. I'm assuming you, you look at the list. Yeah, hey, this looks like a nice Polish name. We're going to pick this guy. And the – Probably. I don't know. Yeah, I, I have to fill out with a questionnaire. Right, yes. right you fill out the questionnaire. And then I remember you pulling up. For some reason, I remember it being a white hatchback car. It was. Uh, it was Bonneville, was it? No, no, no. no? no, no. Oh, so that was Ford little Ford es Escort. Ford Escape, Escape something <laughs> yeah. like that. And I walk out Escort. thinking, you know, this, yeah, okay, this is going to be a really cool family. And I see Bearded there, pregnant, with a baby in the back. Yep. And, and I'm Christine. like, what? Christine, and you're at, now pregnant with Brian. And, and no guy in a <laughs> and, and no guy in the car. Uh, what have I gotten myself into? And that blossomed into a great relationship over four years. 
and uh, and then you you know retired a, a, a an unbelievable an unbelievable stellar career, and had a wonderful life and wonderful kids. Yep. Um, what was your first impression when when you you pulled up and see me walking out and and because you weren't around yet you were no, you, you, you were gone the, for the summer yeah I was kind of nervous because I thought what am I what am I going to talk about and you know it you were the first kid that responded so and you've had many better ones before I'm sure no, but one of the things I no. always remember is the <laughs> unbelievable cooking. Oh, well, I love to cook. I don't know how cook. good it and is, you but still I love it. And I still cook. remember the meal that you taught her how to do. Oh, Z-Z. when you came, Z-Z. yes. And yes. I still remember telling, uh, I was going to bring this up, The not only is it but you made it better. Because you put some peas and corns in it. Really? Uh, yeah, one oh, time. yeah, a couple of times. You did, I, oh my gosh, this is so good. And I still do, I still do that today. <laughs> okay. But what I want to do right now is a special little almost intermission here, uh, which we'll film is I want to just call Brian and call Christine and have them ask one question, an, an impactful question that you had on their lives, just like an impactful, um, how much impact you had on my life. Cause your dedication to your service, your patriotism and your hard work and, and just uh, luck and just being able to persevere is what we do here. Is what and you know, my father taught me that as well. Uh, my sponsor family taught me that. I mean, how can you not inspire to be a better person when you hear this your story, uh, the last Polish Mohican, and, and what you've done? And uh, I mean, I know there is. We won't go into details, but I know there is a lot of suffering that happened to your your family when you never came back. Um, uh, but you've had the uh, privilege of seeing them and, and doing things. So it was... And communism collapsed. And, co- and communism collapsed. And I saw you on my first trip 20 years later to Poland, escorting four-star American yes. general. And I was captain. And you were captain. And you were... And we've met in Wright-Patterson. Right and I was right. escorting them after we won the Cold War. And it won the Cold War. Not won the Cold wonderful. War. But it was f- Polish free. I mean, yeah, Poland, Poland was free. Poland was free, free. absolutely. Yeah. And it's now... The best democracy yeah. there is. And shortly after this, I was assigned to our embassy in Warsaw as a captain, U.S. Air Force. Now, how that is doesn't get any better. Full, it doesn't get any better. It doesn't get any better. <laughs> I'm going to call Brian real fast. And Christine, let's see if we can get them on here. We'll pause for a second. This is Christine. Hey, Christine. This is Mike Zarnecki. How are you? Hey, Mike. I'm doing well. Thanks. How you're, are you? You're live on the air oh, and uh, on the Dr. Mike <laughs> show. And welcome to I have two wonderful people here in front of me, uh, T. Mike Sigalski and Birgit, and we, your lovely parents. And I'm we've glad. had a great conversation, and now we want to include you. Are you ready? Awesome. Thank you. I'm ready. Hi, Chrissy. Hi, Princess. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> he says, Hi, Princess. So we've just told this, un- he just told this unbelievable story, you know, and you know it well how he got here to America. Um, what, uh, we talked a little bit last night. Do you remember the two questions I asked you? I do. So we'll go ahead and repeat w- one of them and, and uh, on air in your own words and tell me what your answer is. Um, so you asked me about my dad and what um, a situation or a time that uh, was really impactful to me um, growing up. And I think... Um, <laughs> there are so many things, but uh, one thing that really stands out is uh, just how important um, it was to my dad to make sure that my brother and I knew how lucky we were to um, be born in this country and to appreciate the the things that we have just purely because um, we were born here. And right. so um, I remember growing up, we had um, opportunities to visit Poland and Denmark, and um, I remember one time um, when we were in Warsaw walking by uh, a little boy that was standing on a trash can with a sign around his neck and singing. And I asked my dad what he was singing about. And he said, um, he's begging for money for his family. And I know that there's, um, you know, obviously poverty in the United States as well, but um, that really stuck with me. And it's still to this day, I remember it so vividly and just thinking, you know, the contrast between, um, the life that we live here in the United States compared to um, 
to right. Poland. So, um, Very so impactful. I'm, and it amazes yeah. me not only how sharp your dad's memory is that he can recall addresses and <laughs> locations in Poland to this day. But he, he, what uh, struck me, we were just talking earlier, um, he – he was so patriotic that he was already wanting to go fight. He revealed, and I didn't know this, and volunteer for the American uh, army or military to go fight in Vietnam before he even had got, gotten stepped into America yet. He was still in just right. Denmark. And right. that, uh, right. it's unbelievably impactful. And, and that lesson is so well learned. And then I think I asked you about for your mom. You, yeah, you, yeah. We talked about the, what impact she may have had on you or some story as a new mother yourself. Yeah, so I think um, my mom, she is just, as I'm sure you're well aware, so caring and giving and um, loving. And she um, gives that same love and care to to everybody, to all people that she encounters and um, was such a great role model for um, for working moms, working full time and raising a family and taking care of a household and, um, somehow keeping it all together. Um, and so now as a mom, I try and, um, set that same example for my daughter and, um, I know it's (laughs) so hard because listen, you and I are fairly close in the same generation. I mean, I'm a little older, but, uh, we have a lot on our plate. And I'm always amazed at how well, you know, your mom and dad can, like you said, keep it together. Because it's hard to keep it together sometimes with everything you and I have to do. And it amazes me that they were able to do it and be so so successful and live such a, a, a grateful and precious life, too. Yes. Well, we're super excited. I know uh, uh, your mom wants to say something real fast before we let you go. It seems like you do. No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I, I will call you later on tonight, Christine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you we appreciate yeah. you participating. Thank, and thank, we're, we're calling Brian next. Yeah. Thank Absolutely. you for your kind work, Chris. Yeah, exactly. We thank you, you, Chrissy. Absolutely. We love you, honey. Love you. Love you good, too. good luck uh, in your job, and we'll hopefully our paths will cross soon. And thank you. Sounds great. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Bye, sweetheart. Is that and, good? Is that okay? And she is a wonderful mom. She really yeah, is. Like you can tell. Uh, 3587 is Brian, right? 330 3587. 330 Yeah, 330. Yep, that's it. There we go. If you hold it, uh, like this. Okay. The bottom. The bottom, that's where the sound comes from. Oh, that's sorry. That's why there's no That's why people travel with it. Hello? Hey, Brian, uh, Mike Zarnecki, how are you? Doing pretty good. How are you doing? Very good. You're live on the Dr. Mike Show, and we have two wonderful uh, people here in front of us, your mom and dad, and I'm so excited to have you on our show. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Not only were they an important part of my life as a cadet and in the Air Force and being my sponsor family, but I know, obviously, they've had an ongoing and everlasting impact on your life. Your dad and mom Absolutely. just described the unbelievable story of how he got out of uh, communist-controlled Poland, met your mom in Denmark, and how she reluctantly uh, came to America but then fell in love with it all and um, left a good life there. Yeah. And so now you're leading the good life. And I think I yeah, kind of set up two questions for you. Why don't you t- say what those questions are and tell us what your those answers are? Yeah. So uh, you know, we, uh, we we had discussed how you know something that coming from you know with with my dad coming from Poland and coming here to America, you know, there was uh, you know some of the life lessons that I learned and uh, like a cultural you know, impact. I, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's something that you know I, I think you really do kind of see in today's world is just that. There's this, uh, you know, mentality of a lot of things are free in life, and uh, you know, I think my dad was definitely somebody that, you know, really learned that it, it takes sacrifices in our life, and hard work is definitely something that we have to put forth to to get the things that we that we earn. I don't think it's necessarily just something that, you know, this lifestyle of things are given to us. And, right. And, you know, that's something that I really feel that I've grasped, and it's something that I 
definitely want to teach down to my children too because you know I learned nothing is life and free it takes hard work and right. it's something that you know I everything that I have in my life with you know my my beautiful family my home my cars it's you know it, it took a lot of work to get those and uh, and that was all something that you know I I put that hard work in and, and you know you really appreciate those things more I think when you have that mentality and I appreciate it. I had some time uh, last night with your mom and dad and we were talking some stories and I'll embarrass you or bring this story up because it's a great story because I made them tell it to my kids about uh-huh. tough about tough love and oh, absolutely. about, you know, sometimes uh, putting yourself in front of others is not the right thing to do. And I understand you had a, a long career at Chick-fil-A until oh, yeah. <laughs> until some event at Christmas happened. And what happened there? Tell me. Yeah, so uh, it was, uh, you know, the day after, I, I think, I, I want to say it was either Christmas, I, I thought it was actually Thanksgiving, I think is oh, what it was. Maybe it was Thanksgiving. No, your dad says Christmas. It was Christmas. I don't ever question your dad's memory. It was Christmas. <laughs> One of those holidays, but it was, uh, you know, it was a big shopping time, and uh, we wanted to go out and do something, and of course, uh, I had to work, because, you know, busy times at the mall, and that's where I was working at Chick-fil-A, it's, you know, they, they need their employees there, so I decided to... Uh, call in sick and uh of course my my parents were very good friends with rob taylor the owner of the restaurant mm-hmm. and uh, you know he wanted to call in and check in on me that afternoon to see how i was doing well you know of course <laughs> i told them i was off of work but little did they know i called in sick and so it was kind of one of those things i i got caught in the lie and it was as you know, with, we always do when we lie oh absolutely and you, you know, that's something you learn obviously you know Coming down the road, you you learn that obviously the truth is going to be the best and, out regardless. And, of this. and I understand as a result of that, you lost your job. Uh, I did, and you know, and as much as I can sit back and say, you know, that was a dumb mistake, it's probably one of the more grateful things that you know I am happy that it happened. Like it, it was that tough love decision to learn something like that. Right. But you know, who knows where I'd be today if that wouldn't have happened and not to say my choices were the correct thing to, to lead to that. But I think the consequences were the, the biggest thing to lead to where yeah. I am today. And, yeah. you know, I found myself in a, in a career that I am so grateful to be in. And, you know, just with where I had my 11 years in the air force and now working for the FAA, you know, right. I, I don't know if I'd As be here air, today if that air traffic wouldn't have controller happened. and you'll be able yes, to pass sir. that on to your kids. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, it's going to be something like you said, I mean, we're all going to get caught in it and it's, it's inevitable. You know, they're, I've got my boys, you know, that they're children and that's going to happen. Right. But you know, well, I, I really gonna... hope that it's, I've that done the same, same thing life. on my kids. I've caught them in, <laughs> in teachable moments. We call them. Yes, sir. Now, how yeah, about in terms it. of the second question I asked you? So, uh, and I want to make sure that I understood it correctly here. So we're, we're talking about kind of a funny moment here with, with my dad, correct? That's correct. So, and I, you can embarrass him if you want. <laughs> so, uh, it, this kind of probably goes back to the Ted Ely days, and I'm sure um, my dad is already going to know what we're talking about. But uh, he always had these times where, whenever he saw my dad, he would yell out "Mikey," and I thought that was hilarious. Um, we <laughs> we weren't taught Polish, we weren't taught Danish, but Christine and I, my sister. We learned to say Dami Bougie by one of our uh, one of our middle school teachers, and it means give me a kiss. And so <laughs> it was kind of an ongoing joke that Christine and I would always do, but we would always say Tadeus or, you know, my dad's name in Poland and Tadeus. say Dami Bougie. So <laughs> we, I don't know what it was. It was, it, it's probably more of that inside joke there. How but, do you say I mean, it in it was something. Polish? Tadeusz. Tadeusz, but no, Tadeusz. the, uh, the kids. Yeah. Oh, uh, Dami so we would always Dami say Bougie. Tadeusz and then uh, Dami Bougie and, uh, or, um, or Mikey or something along those lines. And, you know, it was one of those, we could tell it kind of got a little under his skin. It was probably <laughs> why we kept on doing it, but. I'm it glad you told me because I'm going to say it the rest of the night. Perfect. <laughs> 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 well, I sure, I sure do appreciate you telling uh, and sharing on the radio here, the show tonight. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me. We've had a good conversation, and I'm not sure if they want to say anything to you in parting. But thank hey. you, son. Well, I'm very proud of no, you. Absolutely. You know that. Yeah, well, we, we appreciate he, it. And, uh, yeah, he, definitely, definitely love them. And 
You and your mom, uh, uh, you and mom, uh, your mom and your dad both speak uh, last night and today very lovingly and and highly of you. And our um, the words they keep saying is they raised. Uh, they're very proud because they raised very two wonderful children. Um, and I can only live up to that same expectation and hope the same thing happens to my kids. Although oh, at, I agree. at 14 years old, it's not looking so good right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've got my four month old and my three year old. And, uh, you know, it's definitely something that, you know, I appreciated growing up and it's, uh, you know, it's one of those lifelong goals that I think becoming that parent, you know, they always, they always had those moments that they said, you know, you'll never understand until you're, you're a father. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I couldn't agree more. So, uh, it's definitely something, you know, that I challenge myself every day is to just to be that best parent that I can for my kids as well. So, well, I hope our paths cross again and I know we'll be in touch. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much again for having me. And, uh, again, uh, love you, mom and dad. And, uh, love yeah, you, son. I love you, you guys son. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I'll see you later. Mm. All right. Thank you, Mike. Bye-bye. Bye. So that's pretty amazing. I mean, you have a wonderful family. Kind of to wrap things up, well, you you escaped. You, you marry a woman you meet in the country you escape to. You come to America. You live a patriotic life. You live the American dream. You, you are the American dream. People don't appreciate that as much nowadays, I think, sometimes uh, of the sacrifices you have to make to live that dream. You have a great military career. You ask back as a civilian to teach uh, future military um, special operators Mm -hmm. with your background, your human intel, the languages you speak, which I briefly referred to. And so, and then you have a wonderful family and and obviously they're expanding to their own family and leaving your mark. So this is kind of the point where I say what the legacy story and the three things I point out in the legacy story when we're, as we wrap things up are three people that are very impactful. Um, you know, um, be the change is a quote that, uh, Gandhi had said, uh, think different. Who is, you know, Steve jobs, who I think is an impactful, um, person who had a legacy and then uh, to the mountaintop with obviously Mount, um, Martin Luther King and for you you know I really think you add in there you know your legacy is uh, T. Mike Sigelski. Um and your T stands for say it in Polish Tadeusz. Tadeusz. Um, and that is a legacy I think is not just the the what we're doing here tonight but you're about to embark on probably the hardest thing you've ever done, retelling this story that we're talking about now in more detail, but to leave your legacy in print. And for your children and, and grandchildren. For your children and grandchildren. And for this a history book, really, is what it's going to be. And the title is like the most amazing title I ever heard. <laughs> Go ahead and you can announce it here on the show. <laughs> well... The title I picked, uh, one, as I said earlier, the dream of living Wild West. So, yes, I lived three years in Missoula, Montana. I lived almost 30 years in Colorado Springs, three years in Austin, Texas, and then five or six uh, uh, odd years in Washington, D.C. So anyway, um, uh, I also, both of us were bikers. We were riding our Harleys. Harleys, And uh, being on this motorcycle in Colorado, going to Sturgis or going to any place that we've traveled in the Wild West, open spaces, I always felt like I was on my iron horse and uh, and uh, living my dreams through 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 that. And uh, I pick, um, pick that title because of another thing. Everything, starting with the story I told you that, oh, we will maybe not grant you political asylum right. because we don't do this. I came to the United States going to Air Force. Now I'm going to a officer's training school. Oh, I'm just the last class I can qualify to go right. to OTS because of my age. You're the last man everything in the line I do at the, at the train a, station. You're right. 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 Everything is last and last. I am feeling like I should have a signed T-shirt or something, end of race, because <laughs> everything I do is 
it's really I'm the one that goes around and turns the lights off. <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird feeling. So I thought that this would be appropriate. And the book all itself. Uh, and the title being The Last. The Last Mohi Polish, Polish Mohican. Mohican. And uh, a book will have uh, two main uh, parts. The first one will be simply translation. My older sister, which is no longer with us, wrote it. This is all recollection. Her her recollection as a nine-year-old up to 12-year-old in the gulags. In the gulags. I have a handwritten script. I'm going to just simply translate that. And she kept the diary of it. Yes. I have. She mm -hmm. wrote the diary later. And you couldn't write over there. Right. You, you, you would not believe what, what I mean. They didn't, the have they didn't have any of it. So anyway, I'm going to translate that. And this will be the basis and explanation for what my parents then taught me when I was born. Right. Because uh, your sister was 26. She was how well, much older? 21 than, years 21 older. 21 years older. So she described all the stuff that happened to them in Siberia, in the Gulag, where they saw horrific things. Right. Then the Poland, again, is Poland, but it's under communism. And now my dad is teaching me as a his young last kid, again, last, last. <laughs> out of four, uh, teaching what life used to be. And mm -hmm. why life is better in the West, it's because of America. Right. America's uh, m most of all respect for life. Uh, we've heard the stories or rumors in Poland uh, how right. Russians sent the and astronauts that never came back and all this stuff. In U.S., everything is out in open. Right. And people protect people's lives. And now... So uh, then this will tra make transition to my story. And then I will describe everything as from my childhood all the way up till as this the last show. Polish Mohican. Up to this show. I love it. Now, I didn't know the last part. That is a great. I love, yeah. I love the background. And now you're retired. I am retired. In minus. Florida. Yep. Enjoying uh, a happy uh, a retired life. Yes. Uh, and you're not only remain a true patriot, but you are instilling the values of patriotism and still. And you're really not just the last Polish Mohican, but you're, uh, uh, I don't want to say the first, but you're a, a true American patriot. Well, I don't, I'm not going to leave behind any wealth or anything. We had absolutely wonderful life, but uh, I wanted to live through it. I had 21 years to to make up for, for you know for lost time you in were Poland. 20, when you so escaped, I didn't you were do all the smart investment things or anything else. But but you live a full life. And I you're had happy. absolutely wonderful life. I lived through this. We lived through this, um, and. On the end, everything worked out very nicely that we can retire. The, we are not retired as wealthy, wealthy people, but we have a comfortable living right. and uh, stress-free living. And uh, um, now uh, I Don't love worry. to share the story with anybody who want to hear, and I've done it many, many times at the academy when I was teaching right. every place else uh, to, to basically make people aware of the fact that we are have having a lot of things to be appreciate, appreciative, appreciative of. of, and but also remembering that as President Reagan said, you know, the loss of freedom is only one generation, one away. generation away. We don't have it instilled in our genes, in our DNA. If we just blink eye, it we can, may lose it. Just and, like it was and, in Poland, you were a right. free country, and then you blinked your eye, and all of a sudden yeah. it was Russia occupied. Yeah, and I don't want it that. Because I love my children, I love this country, and I love grandchildren. I don't want them to, to live the way I had to escape from. You There's no other place to go anyway. You <laughs> are an amazing individual, and you as well. Have to put up with him and to, be, <laughs> to go through everything you've gone through. Uh, they have such great kids. And then um, I think you're going to be surprised because I'm going to uh, help produce your movie. Oh, of the no, book, no, no. and you will be, you will still be wealthy, but you'll have lots of money once it goes oh, yeah, right. uh, uh, on the big screen. I'm telling you, the story is unbelievable. Uh, I just want a small role, an acting role, when it uh, gets picked up by Hollywood. Uh, Seriously. Right. Um, <clears throat> 
but no, I uh, I do want to just say thank you very much for coming here. You he you traveled out of your way to spend time with us, and we've enjoyed our time yesterday and today together. And we're gonna do some celebration tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, this show, the Doctor Mike show, is really uh, bringing, like I said, compelling people, but also to get you to know a little bit better about the people who are in my life at various stages in that life. Uh, I look forward to bringing some of my own family members. I consider you guys family. You know, I wish my father was still alive today. Um, I missed that opportunity. Uh, you know, he's died at age 54 um, from cancer. And uh, I, I, I um, envy the relationship Brian and Christine have with you. And I, I hope that I can, you know, I like, uh, I miss having that father figure still alive in my life. Um, so I, I appreciate you being part of my life. So. Mike, Mike, we 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 are so happy we met you uh, when you were 18 years old. <laughs> it's yeah. a long you're time. Part of the family too. You were and you are and uh, and uh, you are the American patriot. Uh, yeah. You've done better things than I've done in the Air Force. <laughs> Uh, you are very humble in that, and, and I have some pictures to, to prove that, that sh- what you've done. So I'm, I'm happy, I'm um, healthy, and still alive. Because, like we were mm-hmm. talking before the show, we've done, we've learned a lot, and and we've learned a lot through doing some stupid things mm-hmm. uh, that could be hazardous to our lives. And I'm glad that we can tell these stories now. Right. So, right. thank you, everyone. Thank you uh, to everyone, and uh, we're going to go out and have a wonderful dinner tonight. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you, Mike.